All right, it's time for the one everyone's been asking for. Every Pixar movie reviewed in 10 words or less. And the shorts too, why not? That means every single theatrical Pixar release as well as all of their short films. Except the 2 million Cars shorts that they made and released on their own DVD because... Look, I'll be real. I didn't want to watch those, okay? I watched the two that came out on the Pixar short films collection. That's fine. That's more than enough. Normally, this is where I give a rundown of my positive-negative review system, but pretty much everything on this list is positive, so instead, I'm gonna quickly talk about what each number means, because some of these videos people comment like, Well, hey, you gave it a 6? What, what, you didn't like it? Like, whoa, hang on there, buddy. A 6 out of 10 is not an F. I'm not the American educational system. A 6 is above average. A 1 is a garbage movie that nobody should ever see. It is boring as sin and it hurts to watch. There is nothing of value to be gained from seeing it. Two is slightly less terrible. Maybe there were a few redeeming jokes or that one character you liked that kept it from being a one, but it's still very painful. Three is the same way, but it no longer physically hurts to sit through the movie. This is the rating you give a film when you're actively checking the video bar over and over again to see how long you have left until the ending. Four is mediocre. Just bad. Not horrible, but you didn't really enjoy yourself. Five is an average movie. Like, yep, that was a film. You didn't hate it, you didn't love it, it was fine, but you kind of feel like you could have done something better with your time. A six is the first good rating on the list. It's a movie you enjoyed watching and it didn't actively waste your time, but you don't have any interest in seeing it again. A seven is a movie you enjoyed enough that you would want to see it again, even if that rewatch is pretty far off in the future. Like, you could recommend this to someone, you liked it. I often give sevens to movies that are mostly really good, but have some pretty noteworthy flaws. Eight is just a solid, entertaining movie. Really enjoyable. Maybe even great. A nine is an awesome movie. Really engaging. Something you'd really want to recommend to anybody. The kind of movie that makes you want a sequel. A ten is an entertaining movie that does something with its filmmaking or storytelling that is so noteworthy that everybody who likes film should see it. That doesn't mean it's a perfect movie, but it is a must-see for one reason or another. And I should say those are more guidelines than they are hard rules, but that's basically my system. So, now that we're all on the same page, it's time to review every Pixar movie in ten words or less. Okay, it's Brave Little Toaster, but this time they're toys. I apologize for my childhood prejudice against ants. Okay, it's Brave Little Toaster, but this time they cry. I wish I got paid for screaming at work. Glad that's all wrapped up and doesn't warrant a sequel. Great family drama disguised as a superhero movie. Fleshy car tongue, tiny car bugs, car tramp stamp. Dull movie's finale leaves a good taste in your mouth. <sighs> but it's so preachy. <laughs> Shush. Cute robot love story. I don't want bird. Wait. Yes, I do. Okay, brave little toaster, but this time two cries. I want to make a spy movie. No, you make cars. Mother Bear. Animal House. <laughs> more like Monster House. <laughs> more, more like Monster House. Oh no, not Booper the Elephant. Western Dinosaur Dog Movie. Well, you heard the darts. More like finding Bory! <laughs> <coughs> oh god. More like Monster House! Hey, can we make a good Cars movie? Fine. One. Recuérdame. No llores, por favor, perdóname. Ya estoy llorando. All right, that's all the movies. All we have left to do are the shorts, and it's a little too easy to rank a short film in 10 words or less, so how about we challenge ourselves and do it in five words or less? 1984 was a rough year. A real ball buster. Hey, this looks all right. Uh -huh. Nice 90s bowling alley wallpaper. It's just me, but 70. <laughs> I can't believe Mike's dead. Did Illumination make this? My favorite flaming baby movie. Double Treble. Nice Fallout music. Nice lighting effects test. Nice rat education fever dream. Now you're thinking with portals. Oh no, more cute robots! DVD extra. Bad DVD extra. Hey, Stork Steam. Bad news. Really clever visuals and sound effects. Okay, this time it's Moana. Okay, this time it's McDonald's. Have you bought planes yet? Pixar makes the DreamWorks logo. I like John Michael Higgins. Make a TV show already. Brave lore. <laughs> More like <laughs> bore. That's some interesting slow-mo. Filling my water with volcanicity. Incredibles 2 looks neat. Inside Out is mediocre. Oh, they're so cute. I teared up a little. 
And that's all of them. But before I end the video with my usual top and bottom three movies, I'd like to take a moment to talk about this video's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an affordable online private service that connects you with a personalized therapist or counselor. Sometimes people will message me online or come up to me at conventions to tell me that my videos help them to get through a tough time, whether that means depression, loss, what have you, and that's great, I'm happy to help. So I'd like to reach out to those viewers now and offer them this tool in case those tough times ever come back. Once you've been connected with your personalized counselor, you can talk with them via text message, video chat, phone call, however you like. And they even offer financial aid to those who qualify. If BetterHelp sounds like something you might be interested in, please consider clicking the link in the description to start the conversation. Thank you for listening, and now without any further ado, here are my top and bottom three Pixar movies. To infinity and beyond! Coco. Coco is a super cute musical buddy adventure about a young boy trapped in the land of the dead and his skeletal companion, Hector. They have a great dynamic. I love Dia de los Muertos aesthetic, I love good songs, I love big musical final boss fights, I love crying like a baby at the end of this movie. Go see Coco, it's, it's very, very good. You are a sad, strange little man, and you have my pity. Bugs Life! Bugs Life. It's about bugs. Yup. Like, don't get me wrong, it's not horrible. It's just not really noteworthy. Like, none of the characters are very interesting. The protagonist isn't that likable. Is not. Is not. Is not. Is not. Is not. The story runs on tragic miscommunication, which is always a fun hallmark of 90s storytelling. I just, I can't think of a single scene that stuck with me in this movie. But Kevin Spacey does an okay job as the villain. He's probably the highlight. To infinity and beyond! The Incredibles. The Incredibles is not only one of the best superhero movies of all time, but also one of the best family movies of all time. And I don't mean that it's a movie for the whole family. In fact, I didn't like this movie as a kid because all the subtleties of Helen and Bob's relationship were totally lost on me then. But now I find them really interesting. It's just an honest depiction of a husband and wife against a fun, poppy superhero backdrop. And that's a really cool, unique, interesting story setting. Every scene is cool, every scene is fun. I like pretty much everything about this movie, except Violet. Why do you sound so whiny? You are a sad, strange little man, and you have my pity. <laughs> Monsters University and Finding Dory. It's a tie! So, I don't like movies that don't need to exist. Like, why make a movie if you're not going to tell an interesting story? Why make a sequel to a well-loved film if you're not going to expand upon the world building or the characters? Or if you're going to directly contradict the original films? Uh, you've been jealous of my good looks since the fourth grade, pal. <laughs> Is it money? Is the reason money? It's money. I respect a boring movie that tries something new and fails more than a sequel that doesn't try anything whatsoever. Especially if that sequel is basically every other college film ever made. Don't let me down, Incredibles 2. To infinity and beyond! Wally. Some people don't like Wally -E because they say it's too preachy with its environmentalism or because they don't like the human characters. And while I admit it doesn't handle those things perfectly, Wally -E isn't really about that. At its core, Wally -E is a love story. It's a cute love story between two robots in space. And most of the film is told without speaking a single word. And that's incredible! This film is a monument to show don't tell. It's gorgeous, it's cute, it's moving, and I think there's something to be said for a movie that injects so much humanity into its robot characters. Also, Define Dancing, it's one of the best scenes in film. Not just animation. Film. You are <laughs> Cars. No likable characters. Cars! Why are they cars? How does them being cars service the story? What are the car rules? Oh, they locked themselves because they were scared? What are they locking? Can cars open each other and steal things? What do they steal? Do they steal organs? 
Do they have organs? Why are these bugs cars? Are cars born? Do cars come from a factory? Do they mate? This franchise implies they mate. What does a pregnant car look like? Is it an egg sac sort of situation? These are the questions that came up when I watched Cars. I have no answers. Cars has no answers. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, then you should check out the other marathon reviews I've done or follow me on Twitter at welcome to tweet and tell me what videos you'd like to see me do on there. I'd like to give another quick shout out to our sponsor, BetterHelp. If you think they might be a good fit for you, be sure to check out their link in the description. You can also find a link to my Patreon down there. People always ask me why I give the ratings I do for these videos, but I can't really go into it given the nature of 10 second reviews. So I've been thinking about recording full casual reviews of each marathon for people to listen to and putting those up on Patreon for anybody interested. The Pixar one will be available in a few days for both patrons and non-patrons, but all the others will be Patreon exclusive. Thanks.